Hello all, and before we get started, let me say our customary blessings. Blessed art thou, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments and commanded us to engross ourselves with the words of Torah. Please, Lord our God, sweeten the words of your Torah in our mouths and in the mouths of all your people Israel. May we and our offspring and the offspring of your people, the house of Israel, may we all together know your name and study your Torah for the sake of fulfilling your desire. Blessed are you, Lord, who teaches Torah to his people, Israel. Blessed are you, Lord, our God, King of the universe, who chose us from all the nations and gave us the Torah. Blessed are you, Lord, giver of the Torah. May the Lord bless you and keep watch over you. May the Lord make his presence to enlighten you and may he be kind to you. May he bestow favor on you and grant you peace. Today's reading is... Uh, family history. Uh, our Torah portion for today is Genesis, Genesis twenty five nineteen through twenty eight nine. Prophets is one Samuel twenty eighteen through forty two. Malachi one one through twenty seven. Luke three one through twenty two. Romans nine six ten through sixteen. Hebrews twelve fourteen through seventeen. Genesis 25, 19 through 28, 9. These are the generations of Isaac, Abraham's son, Abraham's father, Isaac. And Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah, the daughter of Bethuel, the Aramean of Padan Aram, the sister of Laban, the Aramean, to be his wife. And Isaac prayed to Yahweh for his wife. Because she was barren. And Yahweh granted his favor. And Rebekah his wife conceived the children. The children struggled together within her. And she said. If it is thus. Why is this happening to me? So she went to inquire of Yahweh. And Yahweh said to her. Two nations are in your womb. The two peoples from within you shall be divided. The one shall be stronger than the other. The older shall serve the younger. When her days to give birth were completed. Behold there were twins in a room. The first came out red. All his body was like a hairy cloak. And they called his name Esau. Afterward his brother came out with his hand holding Esau's heel. So his name was called Jacob. Isaac was 60 years old when she bore them. When the boys grew up, Esau was a skilled hunter, a man of the field, while Jacob was a quiet man, dwelling in tents. Isaac loved Esau because he ate of his game, but Rebekah loved Jacob. Once when Jacob was cooking stew, Esau came in from the field and he was exhausted. And Esau said to Jacob, let me eat some of that red stew, for I am exhausted. Therefore his name was called Edom. Jacob said, sell me your birthright now. Esau said, I'm about to die of what use is a birthright to me. Jacob said, swear to me now. So he swore to him and sold his birthright to Jacob. And Jacob gave Esau bread and lentil stew. And he ate and drank and rose and went his way. And Esau despised his birthright. Thus Esau despised his birthright. Now there was a famine in the land besides the former famine that was... In the days of Abraham and Isaac went to Gerar, to Abimelech, king of the Philistines. And Yahweh appeared to him and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Dwell in the land of which I shall tell you. Sojourn in this land, and I will be with you and will bless you. For to you and to your offspring I will give all these lands. And I will establish the oath that I swore <coughs> to Abraham your father. I will multiply your offspring as the stars of heaven and will give to your offspring all these lands <clears throat> and in your offspring all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge <clears throat> my commandments my statutes and my laws so Isaac settled in Gerar <clears throat> when the men of the place asked him about his wife he said she is my sister for he feared to say my wife thinking Lest be the man of the place should kill me because of Rebekah, because she was an attract she was attractive in appearance. And when he had been there a long time, Abimelech, king of the Philistines, looked out <coughs> of a window and saw Isaac laughing with Rebekah his wife. And Abimelech called to Isaac and said, "Behold, she is your wife." 
How then could you say she is my sister? Isaac said to him, Because I thought lest I die because of her. And Abimelech said, What is this that you have done to us? <coughs> One of the people might easily have lain with your wife, and you would have brought guilt upon us. So Abimelech warned, of, warned all the people, saying, Whoever touches his man or his wife shall surely be put to death. And Isaac swore in that land and reaped. <coughs> Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold. Yahweh blessed them, and the man became rich and gained more and more until he became very wealthy. He had possessions of flocks and herds and many servants so that the Philistines envied him. Now the Philistines had stopped and filled the earth and all the wells that his father's servants had dug in the days of Abraham his father. <coughs> And Abimelech said to Isaac, Go away from us, for you are much mightier than we. So Isaac departed from there and encamped in the valley of Gerar and settled there. And Isaac dug again the wells of water that had been dug in the days of Abraham his father, which the Philistines had stopped after the death of Abraham. And he gave them the names that his father had given them. But when Isaac's servant dug in the valley and found there a well of spring water, the herdsmen of Gerar quarreled with Isaac's herdsmen, saying, The water is ours. So he called the name of the well Isaac, <coughs> because they contended with him. And they dug another well, and they quarreled over that also. So he called the name Sitna, and he moved from there and dug another well. And they did not quar quarrel over it, so he called its name <coughs> Rehoboth saying, For now Yahweh has made room for us, and we shall be fruitful in the land. From there he went up to Beersheba, and Yahweh appeared to him, saying, <coughs> appeared to him the same night, and said, I am the Elohim of Abraham your father. Fear not, for I am with you, and will bless you, and multiply your offspring for my servant Abraham's sake. So he built an altar there, and called upon the name of Yahweh, and pitched his tent there. And there Isaac's servants dug well. When Abimelech went to him from Gerar with <coughs> Ahuzeth, his advisor, and Pico, the commander of his army, Isaac said to them, Why have you come to me, seeing that you hate me <coughs> and have sent me away from you? They said, We see plainly that Yahweh has been with you. So he said, Let there be a sworn pact between us, between you and us. Let us make a covenant with you. That you will do us no harm, just as we have not touched you or have done any, <coughs> done to you nothing but good, and have sent you away in peace. You are now the blessed of Yahweh. So he made them a feast, and they ate and drank. In the morning they rose early and exchanged oaths, and Isaac sent them on their way. <coughs> and they departed from him in peace. That same day Isaac's servants came and told him about the well that they had dug, and said to him, We have found water. He called it Sheba. Therefore the name of the city is Beersheba to this day. <coughs> when Esau was forty years old, he took Judith, the daughter of Beri, the Hittite, to be his wife, and Basmath, the daughter of Elon, the Hittite, and they made life bitter for Isaac and Rebekah. When Isaac was old and his eyes were dim so that he could not see, he called Esau his older son and said to him, My son, he answered, Here I am. He said, Behold, I am old. I do not know the day of my death. Now then, take your weapons, your quiver, and your bow, and go out in the field and hunt game for me, and prepare for me a delicious food such as I love, and bring it to me so that I may eat, that my soul may bless you before I die. Now Rebekah was listening when Isaac spoke to his son Esau. So when Esau went to the field to hunt for game and bring it, Rebekah said to her son Jacob, I heard your father speak to your brother Esau. Bring me game and prepare me, prepare for me delicious food that I may eat and bless you before Yah Yahweh before I die. Now therefore, my son, obey my voice as I have commanded you. Go to the flock and bring me two good young goats so that I may prepare for them food for your father, such as he loves, and you shall bring it to your father, so that I may bless you before he dies. But Jacob had said to Rebekah his mother, Behold, my brother Esau is a hairy man, and I am a smooth man. Perhaps my father will, 
will feel me and <clears throat> and I shall seem to be mocking him and being a curse upon myself and not a blessing. His mother said to him, Let your curse be on me, my son. Only obey my voice and go. Bring them to me. So he went and took them and brought them to his mother. And his mother prepared delicious food such as his father loved. And Rebekah took the best garments of Esau, her older brother, which were with her in the house, and put them on Jacob, her younger son. And the skins of the young goats were put on his hands and on the smooth parts of his neck. And he put the delicious food in the bread, which she had prepared into the hands of her son Jacob. So he went to his father and said, My father. And he said, Here I am. Who are you, my son? Jacob said to his father, I am Esau, your firstborn. I have done as you have told me. Now sit up and eat of my game, that your soul may bless me. But Isaac said to his son, How is it that you have found it so quickly, my son? He answered, Because Yahweh your Elohim granted me success. Then Isaac said to Jacob, Please come near, that I may feel you, my son to know whether you are really my son Esau or not. So Jacob went near to Isaac, his father, who felt him, and said, The voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are, son, are the hands of Esau. And he did not recognize him, because his hands were hairy like his brother Esau's hands. So he blessed him. He said, Are you really my son Esau? He said, I am. Then he said, Bring it, to, bring it near me that I may eat of my son's game and bless you. So he brought it near to him, and he ate, and he brought him wine, and he drank. Then his father Isaac said to him, Come near and kiss me, my son. So he came near and kissed him, and Isaac smelled the smell of his garments, and blessed him, and said, See, the smell of my son is as the smell of a field that Yahweh has blessed. May Elohim give you the dew of heaven, and the fatness of the earth, and plenty of grain and wine. Let people serve you, and the nations bow down to you. Be Lord of your brothers. And may your mother's sons bow down to you. Cursed be every one who curses you. And blessed be every one who blesses you. As soon as Isaac had finished blessing Jacob, and Jacob had scarcely gone out from the presence of Isaac his father, Esau, his brother, came in from his hunting. He also prepared delicious fruit and brought it to his father. And he said to his father, Let my father arise and eat of his son's gain, that you may bless me. And his father Isaac said to him, Who are you? He answered, I am your son, your firstborn Esau. Then Isaac trembled very violently and said, Who was it then that hunted game and brought it to me? And I ate it all before you came, and I blessed him, yes, and he shall be blessed. As soon as Esau heard the words of his father, he cried out with an exceedingly great and bitter cry and said to his father, Bless me, even me also, my father. But he said, Your brother came deceitfully, and he has taken away your blessing. Esau said, is he not rightly named Jacob? For he has cheated me these two times. He took away my birthright, and behold, now he has taken away my blessing. Then he said, Have you not reserved a blessing for me? Isaac answered and said to Esau, Behold, I have made him lord over you and all his brothers, and I have given him and I have given to him for servants, and with grain and wine I have sustained him. What then can I do for you, my son? Esau said to his father, Have you but one blessing? My father, bless me, even also, O father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. Then Isaac, his father, answered and said to him, Behold, away from the fatness of the earth shall be your dwelling, and away from the dew of the heaven on high. By your sword you shall live, and, your sh and you shall serve your brother. But when you go restless, you shall break his yoke from your neck. Now Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing with which his father had blessed him. And Esau said to himself, The days of mourning for my father are approaching. Then I will kill my brother Jacob. But the words of Esau, her son, were told to Rebekah. So she sent and called Jacob her younger son and said to him, Behold, your brother Esau com comforts himself about you by planning to kill you. Now therefore, my son, obey my voice, arise, flee to Levin, your brother in Haran. And stay with him a while until you, your brother's fury turns away, until your brother's anger turns away from you. And he forgets what you have done to him. Then I'll send and bring you from there. Why should I be bereft of you both in one day? Then Rebekah said to Isaac, I loathe my life because of the Hittite woman. If Jacob marries one of the Hittite women like these, one of the women of the land, 
What good will my life be to me? Then Isaac called Jacob and blessed him and directed him. You must not take the wife, take a wife from the Canaanite women. Arise and go to Padan Aram, to the house of Bethuel, your mother's father. And take as your wife from there one of the daughters of Levan, your brother's, your mother's brother, Elohim Almighty. And bless you and make your bless you and make you fruitful and multiply you that you may become a company of peoples. May He give the blessing of Abraham to you and to your offspring with you, that you may take possession of the land of your sojournings that Elohim gave to Abraham. Thus Isaac sent Jacob away, and he went to Padan Aram and Laban the son of Bethuel the Aramean and the brothers of Rebekah, Jacob and Esau's mother. Now Esau saw that Isaac had blessed Jacob and sent him away to Padan Aram to take a wife from there. And that as he blessed him and he directed him, you must not take a wife from the Canaanite women. And that Jacob had obeyed his father and his mother and gone to Padan Aram. And when Esau saw that the Canaanite women did not please Isaac his father, Esau went to Eshmael and took, the, took as his wife besides the wives he had, Mahalath, the daughter of Ishmael, son, Abraham's son, the sister of Neboeth. One Samuel twenty eighteen through forty two. Then Jonathan said to him, "Tomorrow is the new moon, and you will be missed, because your seat will be empty. And on the third day, go down quickly to the place where you hid yourself when the matter was in hand, and remain besides the stone's heap." And I will shoot three arrows to the side of it, as though I shot at a mark. And behold, I will send the boy, saying, Go, find the arrows. And if I say to the boy, Look, the arrows are on this, on this side of you, take them. Then you are to come for as Yahweh lives. It is safe for you, and there is no danger. But if I say to the youth, Look, the arrows are beyond you, then go, for Yahweh has sent you away. And as for the matter of which you and I have spoken, behold, Yahweh is between you and me forever. So David hid himself in the field, and when a new moon came, the king sat down to eat food, and the king sat on his seat as at other times, on his seat by the wall. Jonathan sat opposite, and Abner sat by Saul's side, and David's place was empty. Yet Saul did not say anything that day, for he thought, something has happened to him. He is not clean. Surely he is not clean. But on the second day, the day after the new moon, David's place was empty. And Saul said to Jonathan his son, Why has not the son of Jesse came to the meal, either yesterday or today? Jonathan answered, Saul David earnestly asked leave of me to go to Bethlehem. He said, Let me go, for our clan holds a sacrifice in the city, and my brother has commanded me to be there. So now, if I have made favor in your eyes, let me get away and see my brothers. For this reason he has not come, come to the king's table. Then Saul's anger was kindled against Jonathan, and he said to him, You son of a perverse, rebellious woman, do I not know that you have chosen the son of Jesse to your own shame and to the shame of your mother's nakedness? For as long as the son of Jesse lives on the earth, neither you nor your kingdom shall be established. Therefore send and bring him to me, for he shall surely die. And Jonathan answered Saul's father, Why should he be put to death? What has he done? But Saul hurled his spear at him and said to strike him. So Jonathan knew that his father was determined to put David to death. And Jonathan rose from the table in fierce anger and ate no food the second day of the month. For he was grieved for David because his father had disgraced him. In the morning Jonathan went out into the field to the appointment with David. And with him a little boy. And he said to his little boy, Run and find the arrows that I shoot. As the boy ran, he shot the arrows beyond him. And when the boy came to the place of the arrow that Jonathan had shot, Jonathan called after the boy and said, Is not the arrow 
beyond you. And Jonathan called after the boy, Hurry, be quick, do not stray. So Jonathan's boy gathered up the arrows and came to his master. But the boy knew nothing. Only Jonathan and David knew the matter. And Jonathan gave his weapons to the boy and said to him, Go and carry them to the city. And as soon as the boy had gone, David rose from beside the stone heap and fell on his face to the ground and bowed three times and they kissed one another and wept with one another, David weeping the most. Then Jonathan said to David, Go in peace, because we, we have sworn both of us in the name of Yahweh, saying, Yahweh shall be between us and between my offspring and your offspring forever. And he rose and departed, and Jonathan went into the city. Malachi 1, 1, uh, Malachi 1, verse 1, through chapter 2, verse 7. The oracle of the word to Yahweh, to, of Yahweh to Israel by Malachi. I have loved you, thus says Yahweh, but you say, how have you loved us? Is not Esau Jacob's brother, declares Yahweh, yet I have loved Jacob, but Esau I have hated. I have laid waste his hill country and left his heritage to the jackals of the desert. If Edom says we are shattered, but we will rebuild the ruins, Yahweh of hosts says, They may build, but I will tear down. And they will be called the wicked country, and, and the people with whom Yahweh is angry forever. Your own eyes shall see this, and you shall say, Great is Yahweh beyond the border of Israel. As son honors his father and a servant his master, if then I am your father, where is my honor? And if I am a master, where is my fear? And says Yahweh of hosts to you, O priest who despise my name, but you say, How have we despised your name? By offering polluted food upon my altar, but you say, How have we polluted you? By saying that Yahweh's tables may be despised. When you offer blind animals and sacrifice, is that not evil? And when you offer those that are lame or sick, is that not evil? Present that you are present that to your governor. Will he accept you or show you favor? Says Yahweh of hosts. And now, entreat the favor of Elohim that he may be gracious to us with such a gift from your hand. He will he show favor to any of you? Says Yahweh of hosts. Oh, that there are one among you who should shut the doors, and that you may not kindle the fire on my altar in vain. I have no pleasure in you, says Yahweh of hosts, and I will not accept an offering from your hand. For from the rising of the sun to the setting, my name will be a great among nations, and in every place incense will be offered to my name, and a pure offering. For my name will be great among the nations, says Yahweh of hosts. But you profane it when you say that the Lord's table is polluted and its fruit, this, that is, its fruit may be despised. But you say, what is, what a weariness this is. And you snort at it, says Yahweh of hosts. You bring what has been taken by voice, by violence, or is lame or sick, and this you bring as an offering. Shall I accept that from your hand, says Yahweh. Curse be the cheat who has made male, who has a male in his flock, and vows it, and yet sacrifices to the Lord, what is blemished? For I am a great king, says Yahweh of hosts, and my name will be feared among the nations. And now, O priest, this, this command is for you. If you will not listen, if you will not take it to heart to give honor to my name, says Yahweh of hosts, then I will sin. The curse upon you, and I'll curse your blessings indeed. I have already cursed them, because you do not lay it to heart. Behold, I will rebuke you, your offspring, and spread the dung on your faces, and the dung of your offspring, and you shall be taken away with it. And you shall know that I have sent this command to you, that my covenant with Levi may stand, says Yahweh of hosts. My covenant with him, with the one of life and of peace. And I give to him 
It was a covenant of fear, and he feared me. He stood in awe of my name. True instruction was in his mouth, and no wrong was found on his lips. And he walked with me in peace and uprightness. And he turned many from iniquity. For the lips of a priest should guard knowledge, and people should seek instruction from his mouth. For he is the messenger of Yahweh of hosts. Luke 3, 1-22 In the fifteenth year of reign of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate being governor of Judea, and Herod being tetriarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip tetriarch of the region of Itutri and Trachonitis, and Lacinus tetriarch of Abilene. During the high priesthood of Aeneas and Caiaphas, the word of Elohim came to John, the son of Zechariah, in the wilderness, and he went into all the regions around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as it is written in the book, the words of Isaiah the prophet, the voice of the one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make his path straight, every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low. And the crooked shall become straight, and the rough places shall become level ways, and all the flesh shall see the salvation of Elohim. He said, Therefore, to the crowds that came out of, to be baptized, Bam, you brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come, bear fruits in keeping with repentance, and do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father, for I tell you, Elohim is able to from these stones to raise up children for, El for Abraham. Even now the axe is laid to the root of trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds asked him, What then shall we do? And he answered them, Whoever has two tunics is to share with him who has none. And whoever has food is to do likewise. Tax collectors also came to be baptized and said to him, Teacher, what shall we do? And he said to them, Collect no more that you are authorized to do. No more than you are author authorized to do. Soldiers asked him, And what shall we do? And he said to them, Do not extort money from anyone by threats or by false accusations, and be content with your wages. As the people were in expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Hamashiach, John answered them all, saying, I baptize you with water, but he who is mightier than I is coming, and sh the strap of those of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn. But the chaff, chafe, he will burn, can't chafe, he will burn with unquenchable fire. So with many other exhortations, he preached good news to the people, but Herod the king, Herod the tetriarch, who had been removed, reproved by him for Her Herodias, his brother's wife, and for all the evil things that Herod had done, added this to them all, and he locked up John in prison. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, and the heavens were open, and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove, and a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son, with you I am well pleased. Romans 9, 10-16 And not only so, but also when Rebekah had conceived children by one man, our father Isaac, though they were not yet born, and had done nothing either good or bad, in order that Elohim's purpose of election might com might continue, not because of works, but because of him who ca who calls. She was told, "The older will serve the younger," as it was written, "Jacob I loved, but Esau I hated." But what shall we say then? Is there injustice on Elohim's part? By no means. 
For he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. So it depends not on human will or exertion, but on Elohim who has mercy. Hebrews 12, 14 through 17. Strive for peace with everyone, and for the holiness without which no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one fails to obtain the grace of Elohim, that no root of bitterness springs up and causes trouble, and by it many become defiled, that no one is sexually immoral or unholy like Esau, who sold his birthright for a single male. For you know that afterwards, when he was desired, when he desired to inherit the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no chance to repent, though he sought it with tears. Blessed art thou, Lord our God, King of the universe, who gave us the Torah of truth and set everlasting life in our midst. Blessed art thou, Lord, giver of the Torah. Yeah. Okay.